I think it's fair to say at a year and a half into the Nintendo Switch's life cycle that at least up to this point, it's been pretty much a success. It's been accepted by gamers basically the world over. You know, For all six months of this year, it's been the number one seller in Japan. Uh, it just topped out the MPD charts with the release of Octopath Traveler, which boost, helped boost the sales of Switch itself to the top in the United States, we've seen some nice Western third-party support, surprisingly. You know, we're getting NBA 2K19 after we had NBA 2K18 last year. Uh, and we'll actually have a video on 2K coming out later explaining why NBA 2K19 might be the last NBA game I buy from 2K. But that's a story for another time. Um, we've all seen, seen like Bethesda jumping on board with Skyrim and, and Doom. And we know Diablo 3 is coming over from blizzard which activision blizzard and it's ironic that the apple 3 is coming over uh because we're actually talking about something that a basically a design director had to say uh about the switch so what happened is that game informer sat down to do another rapid fire you know where they answer like you know 50 100 questions or whatever um with a developer or a director or, or someone who's in charge of a specific game. In this case, the game would be Call of Duty's Black Ops 4. Now, if you remember, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 was actually on Wii U, so it's not necessarily uh, an out there question to ask someone if Call of Duty Black Ops 4 potentially is coming to Switch. After all, Black Ops has, uh, you know, has been on Nintendo platforms in the past. Both, you know, we, we've seen Call of Duty games obviously on Wii, we saw it on Wii U, and that was during the PlayStation 4 generation that we saw something like that. So. Uh, it's not necessarily, you know, a bad question to ask. Is it going to be on Switch, which is a popular platform, rapidly growing and in hitting with a base of fans that probably would be interested in Call of Duty on the go? And here is how the design director for the game, David Vonderhaar, responded. Any chance Black Ops 4 is coming to Switch? <laughs> uh, I just make the shoes. I don't know about you. But I don't get what's so funny about the question. I understand that potentially from a technical standpoint, there's just not even a possibility that Treyarch uh, and Activision in general would consider bringing Black Ops 4 to Switch. And thus they think the question, or at least this person thinks the question, is <laughs> laughable, but... Why laugh at what is an honest-to-goodness question about support for a game on a specific platform, even if this person does not necessarily get to make the decision, right? Like, he talked about how I just designed the shoes. He didn't just design the shoes. He's the director of design behind the game. It's not just, like, he, he only designed one aspect of it, right? That was a little bit of a joke. But, obviously, he doesn't make get to make the call on it. He's obviously involved in the meetings with, with, with all of the managers. But, yeah... <laughs> This response is just, I mean, here's the thing. If we were a PlayStation or an Xbox uh, YouTube channel, even a PC gaming YouTube channel, and a question was asked to a company about whether or not a game is going to come to whatever platform we happen to be covering, and the person's response was to laugh, and not just laugh, but laugh in a way where it makes you feel like you're even ridiculous for wanting the game to be on that platform in the first place, for even having the balls to ask the question as if it's as, as if it's something that's even a minute thought in their heads, is insulting. And there's no other way to put it. Uh, I, I think the rest of the interview is actually not too bad. I think it's informative. I think it's funny. I think there's some good stuff in it. Uh, like I think all of Game Informer's rapid fire interviews are. But this to me shows that Nintendo has a long ways to go to get acceptance in the West. As much as Bethesda might be showing respect to Nintendo. Even Activision a little bit. Because Activision Blizzard is one company. The Blizzard half of that company is bringing Diablo 3 to Switch. So like at a time when a game from that company that's going to make money for that company is coming to Switch pretty quickly. Like soon. And it's going to even support the Nintendo Switch Online app. So it's even working closer with Nintendo than some third party games have in the past. 
the other part of the company, a part of the company handling Call of Duty, is laughing at the prospect of supporting a Nintendo platform. When Call of Duty has been on Nintendo platforms in the past, so it's not even like this is a terrible question to ask based on past precedent with Wii and Wii U. If Wii and Wii U can get Call of Duty games, of course they're going to ask about Call of Duty games coming to Switch. But again, Nintendo is kind of a laughing stock with many developers, many designers, many project leads with Western Studios. Uh, I mean, it's not just even the AAA studios. Uh, we're now getting a hat in time on Switch, right? Well, back when Switch was first coming out and, and, and rising in popularity, people asked the developers behind a hat in time if a hat in time is coming to Switch, and they originally said that, that they basically responded the same way this guy did, except since it was on Twitter, they didn't laugh because obviously the tone of laughter isn't going to be directly conveyed over Twitter. Instead, they basically emphatically said no. Not only are we not considering it coming to Switch, it will never come to Switch. Fast forward a year plus later, and, well, a hat in time is coming to Switch, and they're basically trying to ignore the fact they ever said it would not come to the platform. Um, and, and I don't think Treyarch's going to have to worry about this per se. Since Call of Duty is a yearly franchise, it's one of those things where, yeah, he said this, yeah, it's a bad look, yeah, it's insulting, but there's a new Call of Duty made by a different studio coming out next year. So we're not going to have, you know, the conversation around Call of Duty Black Ops 4 coming to Switch essentially vanishes once we get to 2019 and we're looking forward to whatever the next Call of Duty is going to be and whether that's going to come to Switch. And the answer is probably still no. And someone else from that studio, whichever studio it ends up being, uh, will probably laugh again when they ask again if it's going to come to Switch or maybe a Switch Pro or, or something like that. I'm, I, I don't know what Nintendo can do at this point to garner the respect of Western Studios. Obviously, a lot of people will say Nintendo just needs to release that standalone platform that goes under your TV that's just as powerful as a PlayStation 4 Pro and an Xbox One X or even a base Xbox One and PlayStation 4 or a base PlayStation 5 or whatever's coming next. And I understand that. I understand that to a degree. But is that really all Western developers are like caring about? They just care about what's under the hood in the box. They don't care about the audience. They don't care about the platform and what that platform might be providing that other platforms are not, such as, in this case, portability. I mean, they brought a Call of Duty game, like an exclusive made Call of Duty game, to Vita. So is it so like crazy to ask them if they're going to bring Call of Duty to Switch? I don't think it's such a bad question. Yes, I know what the answer is. And I know, and I know what the obvious reasons are. They're not bringing it to Switch, even if I disagree with the reasons. It doesn't matter. At least the reasons are there, and I can understand them. But to come out and just laugh at the platform, laugh at the question of a game being on a platform, it's just you're you're essentially making it hard for people if you do change your mind later to want to support you and buy your game. Uh, now, Call of Duty is so big; it's bigger than this one person. I think if Call of Duty Black Ops 4 did come to Switch or any other Call of Duty comes to Switch, I'm not sure this person's comments are going to be referenced as a reason to boycott the game and not buy it. Just like I think plenty of people are going to pick up a hat in time. It's a quality game. Uh, you know, you're not going to hold a grudge forever for some comments made that seem to insult the platform. But still, I want to reach this point where Nintendo isn't looked at like this laughing stock in the industry. I understood when developers laughed at Wii U, right? It didn't have the install base. It forced the use of a second tablet. Uh, we can argue whether or not it was really forced, but they felt like they needed to use it. Uh, so regardless of what the reality is, they felt like they had to use it in some unique way. Uh, the, the Wii U was, was underpowered. Yeah, the Switch is underpowered, but the Switch has an audience, and the Switch has a reason to be underpowered. It's a handheld. Um, there's, so many, there's so many different reasons to not laugh at a question like this. But yet, here we have David Vonderhaar laughing at what really is a good question. A question that Game Informer would not be doing their job if they did not ask in an interview, since it really hasn't been asked yet. There hasn't been anyone who's gone to somebody working on the game and been like, hey, is this coming to Switch? No one's really, like, all we've been able to talk to are PR people, and PR people are good at fluffing and, and, and not and giving you much of non-answers. Reggie fils may included. From Nintendo, he gives a lot of non-answers on a lot of things and talks his way around questions like crazy. But if you get a chance to talk to Eiji Anuma about the Zelda game, go ahead and ask him the same question you asked Reggie. 
you're probably going to get a different answer because even if he tries to talk around it, sometimes you can't help yourself when you know your emotional reaction to it or you know something about the game and you drop these little hints. And this is what, what happens when you overanalyze you know, interviews and stuff from developers especially because you there's always little hints, right? The, the same question can be asked of them 17 times and you'll find little hints in every single t- in every single answer because uh, they can't help it. Like they, They're... You bring, you ask them the question, something comes to their mind, and it's a little bit of something slips out almost every time. Anyways, I I want Nintendo to be respected by the entire uh, Western base. We obviously know EA does not have a lot of respect for the Nintendo platform right now. That's not a surprise. That's why we're not really getting in EA games beyond FIFA on on Switch. So, uh, I you know, does Ubisoft fully respect the platform yet? I don't know. I mean, does Bethesda fully respect the platform? Yeah, we're getting the next Doom game, but you know. Why are we not getting Fallout 76? Oh, because fans speculate because it's an always online game. Why would that make it so Switch can't handle that? Switch has always online games. Like Fortnite. So yeah, that's like literally an always online game. So why would that be a reason to deter? It's not like Switch doesn't have internet. Anyways, it's a very interesting thing. Um, and I'm very curious to hear more from more and more Western developers more and more, uh, you know, just Western people. In fact, maybe I should reach out to maybe some developers I know and uh, maybe under the uh, guise of anonymity, uh, just so they don't get in trouble, maybe ask their thoughts on Switch. And, and would they, if afforded the opportunity by whatever company they work for, be willing to work on a game to bring to Switch? And, and do they think these games are possible to bring to Switch? I don't know. Let me know if you're interested in me maybe having some conversations like that, you know, reaching out and just seeing... Uh, what some what some people inside the industry might have to say on that? Um, because right now, when I see responses like this, I just can't help but just bash my head against the wall and be like, "What is it going to take for people to stop taking Nintendo like like it's a joke? Why is Nintendo Switch the butt of jokes for these people? Why are they laughing at a serious question about support of a platform? It's okay to just say it's not going to come or that decision isn't up to me. But like to laugh at the thought of it just... Uh. And what sucks is there's so many haters out there that are just going to be laughing right along with the guy and be like, I told you so. And it's just... Uh, perpetuating an, a problem that needs to go away. And I would feel this exact same way if it was happening to any other platform. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Ruffle Chance from Nintendo Prime, and if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. And if you would like to show us a little bit of love, be sure to check us out at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime for as little as $1 a month. You can get exclusive access to updates and, and, and inside information on videos I have coming up. And just in general, support what we do. That's really the reason you should head over to Patreon is to support what we do and ensure we can continue to do this nearly every single day. All right, I'll catch you in the next one.